G Booster Set 7, Glorious Bravery of Radiant Sun. This is the latest booster set that just got released today. We're pretty excited to talk about it right here on Car Fighters Network. Stay tuned. Stand up! Vanguard! So G Booster Set 7 introduces further support for the Gold Paladin, Angel Feather, Kagero, Dimension Police, Dark Regulars, and Gear Chronicle, as well as a few Kray Elementals. It introduces the new keywords Blaze, Darkness, Rescue, and Burst for Kagero, Dark Irregulars, Angel Feather, and... We're pretty excited for this set, since it did come out with um, a new set of promos where Burnout did get released. Uh, so we're going to break it down a little bit and talk about how this set might affect the meta which it probably will thanks to the really good support it gave Kagero as well as Gold Paladin and even Angel Feather. So the first grade 4 we have here is the new fusion stride for Gogurt. Gurgurt has this amazing GB2 ability that isn't even a once per turn. It's a simple unite play where you counter blast 1, soul blast 2, this unit gets plus 5k for each of your rear guards and your 5 rear guards get plus 5,000. This is insane, and the fact that you can, if you really wanted to, use this twice in one turn, you make massive lanes with a super huge vanguard. This is going to be pretty hard to guard against, uh, considering G Guardians, even though they're helping, it's going to be a little bit lower since these power knight lanes can easily get to almost over 31k. Um, and I think this is really good, especially for the, go you know, the gold paladins. Um, the fact that they can activate Unite so easily, uh, both during your turn and your opponent's turn, is just too good. So going down, next we have Supreme Heavenly Emperor Dragon, Defeat Flare Dragon. Defeat Flare is like one of the scariest cards that you can threaten. It's only a 15k guard and you have to guard when your opponent's vanguard is attacking. So the fact that you only get up to 26k against your opponent's vanguard, which is most likely going to be over 26k, it's not enough to guard. So it's more of just like a threatening play to use. So I don't think... Well, its skill is it's, it's pretty gnarly, where you can just sweep the back row. So this literally shuts down Sanctuary Guard. Sanctuary Guard, who? Yeah, because Defeat Flare is going to really just punch your back row in the face, and your whole turn is going to die. Uh, so I think Defeat Flare is freaking amazing, but let me know what you guys think down below. Next on our spot, we got Black Seraph Gavriel. Uh, Gavriel is, besides Super Bay... Um, she became, you know, this really great fusion stride. Uh, it's a GB2, you counter boss one, unflip another copy of itself, and it gets, when your card is put in the damage zone during the battle phase, choose up to two units, they get plus 2,000. So it's a little similar to Gabriel's GB2, um, or the grade 3 Gabriel's GB2, and also gets another rescue skill, rescue 2, at the end of the battle that this unit attack, you swap two cards from your damage zone, and then choose your vanguard and deal it to damage. Um, this is amazing because you can get all the you can get extra drive checks basically. So you have a chance for five drive checks, kind of. So you can work with stands. You can put extra crits on your rear guards if they're even bigger because you do get these you know a lot of swaps in the battle phase or you even get these power plays uh, thanks to you know Nurse of Broken Heart and whatnot. And also Gabriel's first skill, part of the GB2. I think that Gavriel has a lot to offer for the Angel Feathers, uh, just because they didn't really have much of a G zone to work around with besides running, you know, Raphael, Noseal, and Raziel. Uh, so now this is another four you can definitely tech into the 16 G zone, uh, and I think it's a really great addition to Angel Feather. Um, our next Triple R that we want to talk about is Knight of Spring Light Paramore. Wait, Paramore? Pelinor? Is that you? Pelinor? Ah, it must be Pelinor's son. Probably. So Paramore, I think, is one of the Triple R's that actually deserved it being a grade 2. Uh, compared to Slayman in the previous set where he was, like, brave enabled and you had to be... <laughs> you, you had to be on Ultimile Vanguard, which is pretty nuts. But um, I think Paramore's great uh, because it activates Unite by itself and it does get plus 2k... Um, also during your opponent's turn since you can unite is basically two or more cards called to rear guard or guardian circle which is a great uh so 
Its skill is basically like an Aglaveil, where you counterblast one, check top three cards, but you call it in the same column. So it's like a Aglaveil Banan Baby. Um, this is still really good because it activates Unite itself, being an 11k hitter by itself. So that means you can get your Cool Gals, you can get your Dindrains, you can go ahead and punch people in the mouth because you're still going to have some pretty big columns off of one counterblast, thanks to Unite. And I think that Paramour is a great card that activates Unite right away. So Dark Irregulars did get some pretty good support also. It got some more Blade Wing support. Uh, Blade Wings, I think, are going to be pretty crazy. Uh, if you guys don't know, the wall that Sullivan can actually build is pretty nuts. Um, so we did get a new Blade Wing Vanguard where it is the basically updated Ragey. Uh, it's kind of like a restander. And I think it's really it's pretty funny. So you can have a Blade Wing Vanguard at the end of that it, it attacked. Uh, except it has to be a grade 3 vanguard, which isn't too horrible because you can just swing with Sullivan and be like, oops, you're at 5, you're going to have to guard this. They guard it. You go ahead and do a superior ride with Blade Wing Ragey. Soul Blast 15, get that plus 15k and plus 2 crits to seal the game. Um, I don't think it's amazing as a restander since the first swing is going to be like low beef number. I still think this is pretty funny to use though. Let me know what you guys think down below of the new Blade Wing support. Gear Chronicle did come out with some super cool stuff also, especially for the Time Beast since Chrono Fang did come out in this set. Uh, for the first stride, we got Bind Time Dragon. Um, this is a pretty sick card, especially for the uh, Chrono Fang builds. Um, considering that it does, it's another stride that can get plus 10 and a crit. And then you can also boop for every bound card you have. Uh, you basically send your opponent's rearguards to the bottom of the deck. And if you guys already haven't tested around with the Chrono Fang builds, they actually do have a lot of cards that do end up getting bounded. Um, this is pretty sick just because the last part of the skill is if you have a Gear Beast Heart, you make the cost free. You counter charge two and then you soul charge two. So you get extra soul for blind time and it enables you to do it a second time because you unflip it. Or you can just go ahead and do time leap plays after attacking Vanguard first. Um, uh, this is pretty crazy because you get to boop your opponent's cards and also swing with an extra crit and then you get free counter blast if you are on top of a gear beast bind time i think is a really great stride but more along the lines of just the chrono fang build not so much chrono jet so like i just said we did get chrono fang tiger who i think is an amazing addition to gear chronicle where now we actually have a card and a type of deck that doesn't have to be Chrono Jet because now we have this super awesome cool guy. Chrono Fang Tiger is while you're paying for the cost for stride, his GB2, everything in your hand gets grade plus three, so you can even stride with triggers. And then if you use those cards to stride with, you can bind all those cards. So if you really wanted to, you can bind five, which is <laughs> super funny um, because you can go ahead and boop your home field and go for the time bind play. Uh, and then he has a really neat on play skill is that you bind one of your cards from your hand when he's placed on Vanguard Circle, and then you send your opponent's regard to the bottom of the deck, and then they call a grade minus two, less than that. So you can, it's basically like, uh, what's it called? Calibum, where you can boop their regard and they send for a grade lower, except Chrono Fang Tiger sends it for minus two. So you can also send ones and zeros back. Which is awesome because it gives you, you know, more, more versatility of getting rid of pesky units such as Laurel. Or, you know, if you're playing in the mirror match, you get rid of their uh, TikTok workers. So next I'm going to talk about a little bit about the G-Guards. Uh, we got, for the first one, for Angel Feather, we got Holy Seraph Suriel. Suriel is, I think, super good for the Angel Feathers um, since they did get another neat G Guardian where at least the other one was basically like Limit Break 4. <laughs> um, so this is Rescue. It's their Rescue G Guardian. It's when it's placed on Guardian Circle, you can counter bust one and rescue one. So basically what Rescue is, you heal one of your damage and then you go ahead and choose your Vanguard and deal it one damage. Which is actually not bad at all because rather than just the old way of just putting the card in the damage zone, you can get these full trigger effects. Uh, you get the heal triggers off, you get the crits off you get all these most especially you get the plus 5000 power so if you have a chance because this is part of the skill where you can look at the top card of the deck put it on the top of the bottom you can decide whether or not you it's going to be a trigger send it to the bottom hopefully you get a trigger again so you get a nice 
chance to hit a trigger make this a 20k guard and also maybe you know you're, you're putting your vanguard at a, a cross right essentially and then on top of these skills you can combo it with gavriel's gb2 with uh, nurse of broken hearts your vanguard is going to be super beefed up thanks to this card uh, the defense is going to be pretty insane next we got slay me flare who is trying to become a giraffe uh, look at that neck the neck is ridiculous when this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, you can boop one of your regards to the bottom of the deck. Look at the top five cards and search for two cards with different grades and call them to Guardian Circle. And then you still shuffle your deck so you don't end up stacking triggers. What is pretty good about this is that it activates Unite during your opponent's turn and you have an additional chance to get up to 30k guard where you can grab a 1 and a 0. Wow, that's so good. Um, if you guys already know, there's also another Unite Grade 1 that does get plus 5,000 either on Rearguard Circle or on Guardian Circle, and it's a Unite skill. And that's like really good to combo off with Slay Me Flare, because you can play it on the field for an 11k, or if you hit it off with uh, Slay Me Flare, you get an additional plus 10. So you can get up to a 35k shield off of Slay Me Flare. This is nuts. Slay Me Flare is great. And it's not even bad that you have to boop one of your own rearguards because you go ahead and refill your board anyways with gold paladin plays. This is probably the best G Guardian ever made. Denial Griffin literally denies. He puts every rush or high swinging number decks in the dumpster. This card skill, this card skill is ridiculous. And it's so simple. When this unit is placed on Guardian Circle, you may pay the cost. Counter blast one. If you do, choose one of your opponent's attacking rear guards and retire it. What? This is basically a rear guard perfect guard. Like, oh, you're gonna swing at me with 60 million? Okay, how about counter blast one? Boop, you dead, dude. Sanctuary guard, you're done. 36? Yeah, how about 30 none? Because it's over. Denied. Next for D police, we do have Super Cosmic Hero X Caribou. X Caribou is X Caribou is pretty cool. I really like how he looks since he does have antlers. He looks like an actual caribou. Uh, his skill is pretty neat. Where if your opponent's unit is over 30k, uh, he gets an additional plus 10,000, so he does a get your vanguard up to 36, which is neat. But also, you can discard an additional card and give your vanguard a plus 4k boost until end of turn. So you put your vanguard at a 15k base for. The rest of the battle it's just like so good <laughs> what so so basically when you do guard with this guy you're gonna be at a you're gonna be sitting who's that 36 plus 4 you're gonna be sitting at 40,000 thanks to this plus 4,000 what you're literally gonna be at a 40k base using this card to guard once and also discarding for his additional cost uh, x curve is pretty neat. Uh, the fact that it does give a cross ride the entire turn uh, is very helpful. Dark Rags did get a new G Guardian, even though the first one they got from Fighters Collection was pretty, really, really, blah, 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 really good. Um, so Jermaine is pretty much the same, where it's kind of like the free plus an additional shield guard, uh, except this one is if you have 10 or more in the soul, you get plus 10,000. And then an additional nifty skill that might come in handy at some plays, uh, except not really anymore since a lot of decks that are control uh, pretty much retire or do some kind of effects in the main phase. Um, if you have 15 or more in the soul, you can choose any number of units and then get resist. I think the only card that this pretty much counters is like the cross because his end of battle skill can end up booping your units, but that's pretty much the only thing I think of off the top of my head. Uh, so Jermaine is pretty cool. Look at him saving that girl. Oh yes, please save me. I have so. I have so. Next we got Highbrow Steam Rafana for Gear Chronicle. This card I think is pretty good. It's a free 10k boost and it can also help set up your time leap plays. Uh, so basically you can go ahead and choose one of your grade 1 or greater rear guards. Send it back to the bottom. Or not even to the bottom. You send it to their deck because you're going to shuffle anyways. Um, you search for a grade 0, you call it to rearguard, and if you call something, it gets plus 10. So you can go ahead and call your TikTok, you can call your Chronodran, you can call your Oratars. This pretty much sets up a lot of the plays for, um, you know, 
this pretty much sets up a lot of the place for time leap. Uh, so I think Grafana is pretty good. And it's also free, which is what I like the most. You can go ahead and send your GG back to the deck. You can go ahead and reuse it. I think that is pretty nifty. So with the release of G Booster Set 7, we're pretty excited to see that Kogro is definitely coming back. Angel Feather is only getting stronger. Gold Paladin can make the fattest lanes known to man. And Dimension Police can just keep getting bigger Vanguard swings and super drive checks. Uh, thanks. Uh, Gear Chronicle did get another variant of another deck that you can play. You can play Chrono Fang Tiger instead of Chrono Jet, so that's pretty awesome also. Dark Irregulars did get new Blade Wing support, but we're going to get even more Dark Irregular support like the Fusion Shaharit Strides in the next booster set, GBT08. So stay tuned for that, guys. So hope you guys like this quick breakdown of G Booster Set 7. I pretty much only covered the triple R rarities and a few G Guardians. I didn't want to cover everything, keep this episode a little bit short. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Like our videos, comment down below if you haven't already, and subscribe for more content. Vanguard Central, out.